Hello, hello. Welcome to the Productive Wellbeing Afternoon Show. I am super excited that this is our first 2.30 p.m. Um, productive Wellbeing Show. And today I am joined by the amazing Chris Shembra. So this is episode 39. And let me just check that we're live on LinkedIn um, because we are live on Facebook. Everything is a little bit slow and delayed at the moment. But yeah, there we are. Amazing. So <laughs> as you join, guys, let us know where you're joining from. Um, and if you're on the replay, let us know that you're watching on the replay because Chris and I um, really want this to be an interactive session. So let me introduce Chris. So I am delighted to welcome a best-selling author of a book called Gratitude and Pasta, which is the secret source for human connection. It's chronicling his adventures as one of the most sought after dinner hosts in the world. And Forbes have ranked his book as number two of 2020 to create human connection. And USA Today have called him the gratitude guru. Apart from all of this, he is also the founder and chief question asker of something called a business called 747. Wow, Chris, where do we start? This is so awesome. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited that I didn't have to wake up at 4 a.m. New York time to be on your morning show. This is so much more comfortable. So I'm excited to be here. I know. So <laughs> awesome. So awesome. Right. Um. Guys, as you're joining us, let us know where you are because Chris is in sunny New York. I am in a slightly gray London. We've got <laughs> Andy, Andy Parks joined us from Shropshire. He's saying it's cold, but a bit sunny. Mm. Um, so we're so British, Chris, we talk about the weather. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I brought, I brought British tea just for y'all, a, a nice English breakfast tea. Oh, amazing. We love you. We love you. So let's dive straight in because, guys, this conversation with Chris could go on for hours. I mean, the man's CV is amazing. Um, at the end of this, he's going to let us know where you can find out more about him. So if you're resonating with anything he's saying, don't worry, you're going to get all the details at the end. So, Chris, let's just dive straight in. OK, you were telling me that you have sparked 400,000 relationships around the dinner table. Basically, you have also de devoted your life to pasta and sauce. How on earth did this begin? Oh, it's, I, I don't even know how I got here. But, um, you know, it, I want to take us back to answer that question. I'll, I'll tell a, a brief story of what my life looked like um, in kind of yesteryear. Um, if we go back to 2015, I was a, a very successful um, theater producer. I was traveling all around the world, uh, producing Broadway plays or, and, and investing in plays and touring shows and all that kind of jazz. Our, our plays have won 14 Tonys, seven Emmys, a Grammy. Everything looked great on paper, but that necessarily doesn't correlate with well-being and feeling good in your heart. And that kind of low point was in July of 2015. I had just come back from Italy after producing a Broadway play over there. And when I got back to New York, realized I had not hit rock bottom, but I had hit kind of a period of unfulfillment. Uh, in my 350 square foot studio apartment at the time on Central Park West, um, I realized I felt four things. Lonely, unfulfilled, disconnected, and insecure. As you know, those are not the recipes for well-being. And I thought back, what did I love most about my time in Italy? What sparked that? It was the food. So I started fiddling around in my kitchen and trying out different recipes. And I accidentally invented a simple pasta sauce recipe and figured I should probably feed it to people to see if it's even good or not. So on July 15th of that year, 2015, we invited 15 of my friends over for dinner and uh, had our first, you know, first meal together. 6.30 p.m. cocktails began. 8 p.m. dinner was served. But at 7.47 p.m., the name of our company, we put the pasta in the pot and got everybody to work together to create the meal. And we realized through this shared group dining experience where we talked about some interesting concepts around gratitude and we ate together, we cooked together, people came alive and they transformed and they told some beautiful stories. And after doing a number of those dinners, I realized it was starting to, uh, you know, 
have the impact on my heart that I was looking for. And uh, it really saved my life. I've got a history of suicide, depression, jail, rehab on the resume. And I knew that these dinners were somehow slowly having its effect. So I knew I, I couldn't afford not to do them. So we just kept at it. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. It's so awesome to hear um, what what people's sort of wake ups are, because um, lots of people are getting them through this uh, global lockdown that we're in at the moment. But um, the second area that we really wanted to speak about today was that you have basically built your business on gratitude. So I tell people gratitude is a superpower and it will save their life because I, I believe this. But talk to me about gratitude and how it's actually enhancing our well-being. Yeah, you know, at at that very first dinner, um, once we had cooked together, drank together, ate together, then we had an opportunity to talk together. And at the very first dinner, Instead of asking a, a jarring question like, what are your biggest fears? What's your biggest failure? What's your greatest regret? What are your biggest goals? Those are pretty intimidating questions to ask people when you've gathered people that have never met before. And at that very first dinner, we asked a simple question around gratitude. If you could give credit or thanks to one person in your life that you don't, give enough credit or thanks to, who would that be? If you think about the question, I'm asking you, who do you not thank? Someone you've never met before, someone you've known your entire life. And we started hearing people tell some amazing stories, stories of their mothers, stories of their third grade teachers, stories of their ex-girlfriend that made them realize they were gay, stories of that stranger, stories of a mentor, stories of the people that they are now leading. And we realized that these this prompt was something that we would stick with. We saw it unlock tears and transformation and liberation. And so we we really started studying it. And we've, you know, we've asked this gratitude question to a lot of people over the years. And we realized that gratitude is such a key for well-being. Our, you know, part of our team, uh, they're neuroscience researchers. They, you know, they're getting their PhDs in the psychology of gratitude as it relates to well-being. So we're glad to have a great team that that gives us great feedback and data. Um, but gra gratitude is is an emotion. It's a state. It's a mood. It's an action. You can be grateful, right? You can have a grateful disposition. You can share gratitude as an action, but gratitude in this context, it unlocks your ability to find positive memories from your life, find negative memories from your life, because then when you unlock those memories, you can learn from them. You can learn if you thank someone who wronged you, if you thank something that you fear, when you address that head first with gratitude, it doesn't hold power over you anymore. It can now be used for fuel. And so we've seen people unlock the values that people stand for and how those values show up in their life today. We've seen people give permission to release negative relationships from their life because they gave gratitude to that. We've seen people get back in touch with people they haven't talked to in years. And it's really become a, a really good tool for connection. And, and when we started studying the impact it was having on our attendees, uh, we knew this was the exact path that we were going to follow. Amazing. Amazing. And you guys, um, I have actually been to one of Chris's 747 dinners. So this brings me on to sort of our final question. So if you guys have got any questions, leave them in, uh, leave them in the chat. Uh, We've got Victoria Taylor is saying absolutely very thought provoking questions. Love that. Um, so, yeah, we'll get to those. But Chris, so you um, you wrote a book, Gratitude and Pasta, and then coronavirus sends us into a global lockdown. Talk to 
talk to us a little bit about this and then um, kind of end on the pivot of mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it's so interesting. If you think back to our story in 2015, we had just come back from Italy, found ourselves lonely, isolated, insecure in our studio apartment. And that's when the dinners began. Well, so we wrote the book, which, you know, has received great accolades. Its launch date was April 7th, right in the middle of all this. Um, when I wrote the, when we wrote the book, a few months ago, I realized, what's the first thing I got to do with the book? I got to grab the book and I got to bring it over to Italy to show Italy what we did. I have to thank the city of Rome for her impact on me. The, the eternal city really is what created this book. Amazing. Just one second, guys. If you've been to Rome, give us a thumbs up because I've been to Rome. It's an amazing city. So oh, <laughs> so beautiful. And... So we, I grab my dad, I grab our book, we go over to Rome in mid-February, mind you. So the enemy is already in the north of Italy. The coronavirus yeah. is already making its way down south. And we're sitting there saying, what do we do? And so we, we get back to America and place ourselves in a mandatory 14-day quarantine weeks weeks before America did that. So again, I found myself lonely, isolated, unfulfilled, insecure. I see my entire book tour canceling on me, dozens of events, tens of thousands of attendees, all that kind of stuff. And so I'm sitting there saying, what did we do in 2015? We didn't roll over and have a pity party. We started something. So we pivoted the dinners from being an in-person experience to a virtual experience. It's been unbelievable ever since. We've produced 29 dinners in the last seven weeks with between 25 and 150 people coming per night. And it's been such an amazing opportunity to meet people of the world. The people that normally, our dinners, whether I'm proud of this or not, our dinners, we used to sell to the biggest, most profitable, fastest growing companies on the planet. Microsoft, IBM, Dell, you name it. So we weren't able to serve as many people as we wanted because we were just serving our clients. But now we get to serve people from all walks of life, from Russia, Australia, Singapore, London, West Coast, East Coast, my family, my girlfriend's family, young kids. I had my 97-year-old great aunt, Phyllis. My grandfather's sister came to a dinner two weeks ago, and it was unbelievable. And so where, you know, if a company bought 10 dinners from us, we would have to spend right, hundreds of thousands of dollars in jet fuel, in travel costs, in time cost, in all these things, traveling around the world, fulfilling this client. But now a client can come to us and buy four dinners in a day. We could do wake up early for New Zealand time. Then we can do the Asian market. And then we could do at 1.47 p.m. EST, we can do a 7.47 p.m. European dinner. And then an East Coast dinner and then a West Coast dinner. So it's unlocked these amazing opportunities to be in 10 places at once. And I'm so excited because now the people that are in the farthest reaching parts of the English countryside or the breadbasket of America can just log onto their computer and have the same experience as everybody else. And what is amazing about these, um, these dinners, guys, is that you meet people like Chris is saying that you would never have the opportunity to meet. Um, and everybody is so um, excited to be there. So ready and open and willing and vulnerable, um, sharing their experiences, sharing what they're grateful for. Um, and it's all been brought together. And what I love about this story, it's like a Disney movie, um, is from the adversity comes, you know, the Phoenix rises from the flames, but 
it's really that this phoenix is is the connection it's reinforcing the thing the fact that even in this lockdown in this you know unprecedented times it is not a great situation like let's not sh sugarcoat this but um some amazing connections and relationships have been able to come out of this it's yeah the you know the good news is about all this stuff is humans are very resilient creatures yeah we may be fragile with the emotions these days uh, you know maybe we we have a lot of peer pressure or narcissism well the antidote to narcissism and fragility and fear is gratitude people who practice gratitude don't think less of themselves they think of themselves less that's a quote from my dear friend chester elton say that now, one again no people who practice gratitude don't think less of themselves they think of themselves less that's a quote from my my dear friend chester elton's book leading with gratitude a wall street journal bestseller but uh, I, I love that. That's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great quote. And um, it tells you something about human history, which we would be fools to ignore history. And if we study history, humans have survived plagues, pandemics, world wars, many times over. We will get through this. It's going to look ugly, of course, but we will. Human history has proven our resiliency. And if you look at rising up from the ashes, take, for instance, what followed the bubonic plague, right? A great plague that wiped out half of Europe. You go from the Dark Ages to the Renaissance. The global landscape of commerce, the global landscape of connection is going to look far different. But I'm optimistic that you will see some very creative endeavors come out of this that really solve some of human beings' you know, worst challenges. Because that's what happened. We just ripped the Band-Aid off inequality, poverty, political divide, etc. And now is our opportunity to build solutions that solve those challenges. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting chills. I'm super, super excited. And as I said at the start of this, guys, Chris and I could talk for hours. Um, but unfortunately, we're limited by time today. So, Chris, where is a good place for people to find you? And um, if anybody wanted to attend one of mm -hmm. these virtual dinners, what do they need to do? Yeah, so so just, um, I mean, you can find out more information about us at either gratitudeandpasta.com or 747club.org or just find us on LinkedIn. Um the and and follow victoria taylor who's in the comments as well she's a legend she's who connected us i love her yeah but kudos to victoria. Kudos to victoria taylor but um you know if you're watching this and you're sitting there saying shit i've been alone for eight weeks or i'm holed up and getting sick of my family <laughs> for so long in quarantine together with them if you're sitting there saying you're hungry, you're lonely, you're starving for human connection, email us. We'll put you in a dinner, whether it's on New York time or European time or, you know, one of Abigail's dinners. But just email RSVP at 747club.org. Um, I can guarantee you connection, happiness, fulfillment, if only for the moment. It's a distraction from the state that we're living in today. So, so give us a call. We are here for you. If you have communities that need to be connected, it is our gift to serve you. It is our gift to reach out to those nonprofit communities, the inner city organizations, the moms of the Midwest, and say, how can we help them connect? Um, so use us, please. Um, we're here um, for that. All of those links into the comments, obviously. Perfect you will be able to find all of this. Um, oh, and Victoria's put some in. She is amazing. And so Jeez. is Andrew. I mean, <laughs> you guys literally are just the best. Um, Chris, this has been 
an absolute pleasure and an honor. Um, Andy's also said that your book is sold out on Amazon at the moment. Um, oh, God. I'm sure that. Just tell them, to e tell them to email me and we'll take care of it. <laughs> it will be back in stock again soon. But um, thank you so much for your time. And guys, until the next time, which will be tomorrow morning. So UK time, 11 o'clock. Um, that is Thursday. Um, stay safe. Stay well. Stay alert. If you're in the UK, that is our new instruction. And um, don't forget to wash your hands. <laughs>